Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today, we are going to study different types of stereographic projection for different crystal systems. So, what are stereographic projections? So, stereo they are basically 2D representation of 3D orientations of the crystal. So, they are used to represent 3D orientation relationships on a 2D figure. So, this makes the visualization of 3D orientations very easy so it helps to visualize various crystallographic features some of them are slip planes and directions grain orientations that is different grains can be oriented along different axes and angles so that can be visualized using stereographic projection that is also called as texture in a polycrystal okay then we can also visualize crystal planes and directions and their orientations and also the symmetry of the crystal can be visualized so let us look how these stereographic projections are created suppose you want to have a stereographic projection for some plane of this cubic crystal let us say the plane is 0 1 1 plane this plane ok so for a sphere suppose this is the sphere Okay, these are the central axes and this is the equatorial plane. Okay, so let us draw a normal to this plane. So suppose the normal is like this. So, when you project this normal towards the south pole, this is the south pole and this is the north pole. So, when you project it from the south pole, so that is you connect this, the intersecting point in the upper hemisphere with the south pole. So, the point that you get on the equatorial plane, this point is basically the rep representation of the plane or the plane normal. So, this point on equatorial plane represents this red marked plane or its normal. So, instead if you take projection from the north pole suppose here So, you get this point, okay. So, this is the projection of this plane through the north pole and it is opposite in nature.
and is opposite in nature. We generally use projections through south pole. So this is the 1 0 0 axis or the A or Z1 axis. This is the 0 1 0 axis or the B or Z2 axis and this perpendicular to this plane of this screen this is the 0 0 1 axis or C or Z3 axis. Okay, so let us go through the stereographic projections of various point groups concerning different crystal systems. So first we will start with the triclinic crystal system. So the point groups in triclinic crystal system are 1 and 1 bar. This is basically roto inversion. Okay. So let us draw them one by one. So for triclinic, the axis of rotation, since it is only one pole, it can be taken as Z3. Okay. So let us draw a circle. The three axes Z1, Z2 and Z3. Okay. So now suppose we have a point here and for one pole rotation it has to go through 360 degrees of rotation about Z3. So it actually returns back to its original position. Okay, so the point remains unchanged. This is the point group 1. So now let us move to the next point group concerning the triclinic crystal system that is 1 bar. So 1 bar is first the rotation, 1 pole rotation, then inversion about origin or you can say reflection about origin okay so it changes from x comma y comma z to minus x comma minus y comma minus z so let us draw that now so this is suppose your circle with the axis Z1, Z2 and Z3. So suppose you start with this point here, For this is your first point. Then you go about rotating it for 360 degrees, so you land up here again, okay. Now you reflect it about, invert it about this origin, so it changes from this plus X plus y plus z to minus x minus y minus z that it, it goes in the lower hemisphere so it becomes a hollow dot so solid dot represents the objects in objects above the plane of paper whereas hollow dots represent the object below the plane of paper ok now again you rotate it for 360 degree it again land back in its original position and then when you invert it about origin it coincides with this point so now this is the final step so you stop now as a result, you have these two points in your stereographic projection for one bar. So we continue to apply symmetry operations until we reach the initial original point. Okay. 
the symmetry operations are continued till we again land up on the initial original point okay now moving on to the next crystal system that is monoclinic so we have three point groups here they are two two bar and two by m okay for monoclinic the rotation is about b axis or z2 we can say or we can say 0 1 okay so let us draw them one by one so first let us first go with 2 point group 2 okay so here we have a circle this is the z2 z1 Z1, Z2, Z3. Okay. So now we have one two-pole rotation. Okay. About the b-axis. So let us mark the two-fold rotation. This is the symbol of two-fold rotation. So these symbols are very necessary. Okay suppose we start with a point here after rotating for 180 degree it reaches here okay so for monoclinic let us take a point at this position after two fold rotation about the z2 axis okay so it crosses over like this about z2 so here this goes below the plane of the plate paper and becomes a point like this now again for a two fold rotation it will go for a rotation about z2 like this and reach the same initial point this one okay so two fold rotation that is 180 degree of rotation so our next point group is two bar or equivalently called as m so here there is rotation and then an inversion about the origin for two bar so this is a circle again the axis z1 z2 z3 and it is very important to indicate the axis okay so we have first a two fold rotation and then inversion about the origin okay so two fold rotation about z3 so let us make the symbols first so here is the two fold rotation and then suppose this is a point for a two fold rotation it similar to the first case it first goes here but we do not make a point here and and then it is inverted about the origin so this is below the plane of paper it becomes above the plane of paper and it's a point here 
so we do not have this intermediate point okay then now it is gone for two fold rotation about z2 so it becomes a point in the plane below the plane of the paper and then goes for inversion about the origin and again lands up on the initial point so actually we do not have any point here sorry we do not have any point here so we have these two points for two bar okay and here we have this is similar to mirror okay mirror about z1 so when we talk about mirror mirror is always perpendicular to the axis of rotation so here the axis of rotation is this z2 so mirror will be about z1 okay so here this point is reflected here now the third point group concerning the monoclon monoclinic system is 2 by m okay so for 2 by m let us first draw the circle and the axis z1 z2 z3 so here so here suppose we start with the point this one so it undergoes two fold rotation let us mark the two fold rotations okay so it undergoes two fold rotation and becomes a point in another in the lower hemisphere after rotation so now there is a mirror perpendicular to this two so this is your mirror so this is was a two fold so perpendicular to this is a mirror so when you reflect you have these points reflected as these so this is the stereographic projection for 2 by m of monoclinic so here it is like they are treated as individual operations but in case of two bar the inversion plus rotation is a one single operation okay let us move to the third crystal system that is rhombohedral or trigonal the point groups of this crystal system are three three bar three two three m three bar and two by m so we have five point groups for this system and the axes of rotations that are considered for rhombohedral they are c or the z3 axis and the a axis okay so let us look at them one by one so first we'll go with simple one 3 this is simply a three fold 
rotation about C or Z3. So this is the circle. It is a bit distorted, but it is actually a circle. So let us mark the threefold rotation axis, that is the Z3 axis. This is donated by, denoted by a triangle. Okay. So now, for threefold rotation, threefold rotation is. A rotation of 120 degree. So let us divide the circle accordingly. So the rotation axis will be this, then this, 120 degree apart. So if we start with a point here, after 120 degree rotations, it will land up here. And then after 120 degree rotations, it will land up here. And then 120 degree rotations will cause it to land at its initial position. So we have three points, one, two and three. And let us see the second one that is three bar rotation plus inversion. Similarly, we have a circle. So this representation remains constant throughout. Z1, Z2, Z3, a triangular or threefold rotational axis about Z3. So, three bar. Okay. So, for threefold rotation, let us one is this, another this. Okay. So if we have a point here at a similar position, so after 120, deg uh, 120 degrees of rotation, it is here and then after inversion from the origin, it goes here okay, and below the plane. So we do not have actually a point here. Then this goes for 120 degree rotation. It lands up here and then after inversion it goes here. Okay. Sorry, I made a mistake. Let me correct that. Let us start again. with this initial point. After 120 degree rotation, it goes till here. And then after inversion about the origin, it is here. This is point one, this is point two. Then, okay. So we do not have any point here. Now this after 120 degree rotation is here. And after inversion, it goes here. So this is the third point. So uh, since this, that is a compound operator, we do not get intermediate points. We get points after the complete operation of rotation and inversion both. So then again, 120, this, and then inversion. So it is here. This is for second, third, fourth point. 
now after 120 degree rotation it lies at the same position as second point and after inversion about origin it goes here okay and this is the fifth point after 120 degree rotation it goes to the point 3 and then after inversion it is here this is point 6 so this way we have our six points for the stereographic projection of three bar point group okay now let us move to another one that is three two so here three fold is about z3 whereas two fold is about z1 okay so let us have a circle so now let us draw the circle and start see the projection so suppose this is the circle along with its axis Z1, Z2, Z3 a threefold rotation here and a twofold about Z1 let us see the axis of threefold so suppose we start with this one so after 120 degrees of rotation it is here and after 120 this is again here so similarly two fold axes will also rotate and will go up this after 120 degree rotation will go here and then again after 120 will come here after 120 it becomes the original axis okay so let us now start with the point suppose you have a point here and it undergoes three fold rotation so this point lands up here after 120 degrees of rotation and after another 120 degree set it lies here and then this has to go for a two fold rotation about z1 so when this point is rotated so it comes here like this when this is rotated it goes here like this and when this is rotated it goes here like this so we have these six points let me erase these arrows from all over for a better picture So these are the corresponding points and the stereographic projection and if we see these are consistent with the symmetry operation of threefold on the twofold axis as these two points these two points follow twofold operation these two as well follow twofold operation this and this also follow twofold operation. So we can say that the symmetry is consistent. Let us move to the fourth point group that is 3M. That is threefold rotation about Z3 and then mirror perpendicular to z1 that is about z2 
2 okay so mirror notations are always perpendicular so let us draw z1 z2 z3 notation for three fold rotation a triangle at the center okay and a mirror a perpendicular to z1 that is this z2 this is a mirror and this is the axis for three fold rotation so when we apply this three fold rotation to this mirror as well so after two fold a uh, three fold it goes here and then again it goes here so when we have points suppose we start with a point here so let us first apply three fold so after three fold a rotation of 120 goes here then again 120 this goes here then again 120 it lands on the original one then we apply mirror operation so for mirror about z2 or perpendicular to z1 we have for this are one two three points for point two sorry for point one we have this this is point four for point two we get this point which is point five for point 3, we get this point, which is point 6. Okay. So, and as you can see, these points are consistent with reflections about this mirror, mirror 2 and mirror 3 as well. Okay. So, we can say that these operations are consistent with other symmetries as well. So the last point group for this crystal system is 3 bar 2 by M. Okay. So 1 is 3 bar that is roto inversion about z3 and then 2 by m that is a two fold rotation this is a two fold rotation about z1 and mirror perpendicular to z1 that is about z2 ok I hope these are clear so we start with a circle draw the axes z1 z2 and z3 Okay. Okay. So now let us make one three fold rotation first. This is here and three fold with an inversion. So it is represented somewhat differently like this with hollow circle in the center a three fold rotation then a two fold rotation about z1 and a mirror about z2 okay so let us make the axis first so this is your rotation uh, two fold rotation axis then you rotate it by 120 degree and you get this axis this is also rotation two fold rotation 
you again rotate it by 120 and you get one axis here. And when this again is rotated by 120, it lands up on the Z1 axis. Now similarly, this threefold rotation is applied to this mirror as well. So this mirror suppose this is the mirror, mirror 1, it is rotated by 120 degree so it lands here this is mirror 2 and after 120 degree rotation it lands here this is mirror 3 ok consistent with the symmetry now let us start with a point here. So, first let us apply roto inversion about Z3. So, it goes for 120 degree rotation. It lands up here and then inversion it goes to this point. So, this is 1, this is 2. We so, now we have a second point. This is rotated by 120, it lands here and then it is inverted about origin. So, it becomes a point here. So, this is the third point. So, similarly, this is rotated by 120, lands on point 1. When inverted, goes here and becomes point 4. When point 4 is rotated by 120, it lands on point 2 and after inversion, it becomes this point, point 5. Point 5 after 120 degree rotation lands on point 3 and after inversion becomes this hollow point which is 6. Okay. Now we are done with the first thing that is 3 bar. Now we have to go for 2 by M. So let us first go for 2 fold rotation. Okay. So 2 fold rotation about Z1. So, point 1 becomes this, uh, sorry this is two fold rotation. So, from above it goes to below the plane of paper after 180 degree. It becomes this, this is one dash, then 2 becomes this, this is two dash, 3 becomes goes below the paper so this is 3 dash 4 comes above the paper plane of paper this is 4 dash this is 5 dash and this is 6 dash okay and if you see all these points are consistent with the mirror symmetry as well so if you see 4 and 1 dash they have mirror 3 and 2 dash they have mirror, 2 and 3 dash have mirror. So this way they are consistent with the mirror operation and the other two fold ax uh, axes of rotation as well. So this was all about the point groups for rhombohedral or trigonal system. Let us go towards the orthorhombic system. So, for orthorhombic, we have fourth crystal system as orthorhombic. So, here let us see what are the point groups. So, point groups for orthorhombic are 2, 2, 2, 2 mm and 2 by m, 2 by m, 2 by m. And the different axes of rotation 
or the symmetry operation are first is a or the z1 axis next is b or the z2 axis and third is c or the z3 axis let us create these stereographic projections one by one let us first go to 2 2 2 so this is the circle the z1 z2 and z3 so first axis of two fold rotation is z1 second is z2 and third is z3 so let us go for two fold rotation about z1 first so if I have a point here so for rotation about z1 it goes to here and then again rotation it lands on the initial point now let us go to rotation about z2 so they are trans rotated in this manner so here I have a point this and a solid point that is point above the plane so this is the stereographic projection for 2 2 2 point group of orthorhombic crystal okay let us move to the second one which is 2 m m or we can say m1 and m2 for easy distinction okay it is never denoted as m1 or m2 but here we are just mark the numbers in the mirror so that we can distinguish so suppose we have a circle the axis z1 z2 z3 so this two fold is about z1 m1 is perpendicular to z2 so it becomes this z1 axis only so this is your m1 let me mark it outside and m2 is perpendicular to z uh, sorry is perpendicular to z3 so it becomes the plane of the paper so this is your m2 that is perpendicular to z3 so it is the plane of the paper so let us start with point here after two fold rotation it becomes a hollow point in the upper half and then after two fold rotation about z1 it comes back to its original position now let us apply mirror operation so after reflection about m1 this solid point becomes another solid point in the upper half and the hollow point in the upper half becomes another hollow point in the lower half and these two operations like if I apply M2 now, so nothing, everything remains unchanged. So we can say the second mirror is a redundant one. So if we do not apply this as well, we have the same points. Now, last point group for orthorhombic system is 2 by M, 2 by M, 2 by M. So, Z1, Z2, Z3. So, a two-fold rotation about Z1 and a mirror perpendicular to Z1. That will be the Z2 axis. This is your mirror 1. Let us say mirror 1, 2 and 3 again. Now another two-fold rotation is about Z2. And a mirror perpendicular to Z2. That is a mirror about Z1. So this is your mirror 2. 
Now third is a twofold rotation about Z3 and the mirror perpendicular to Z3. So that becomes a mirror in the plane of the paper. So this is your mirror 3. So let us start with points. Suppose we start with this solid point here. Now, when it goes about two-fold rotation about Z1, it goes to the upper half and becomes a hollow point. Then again, it lands back to the original one. And then a mirror about this Z2, that is the first mirror. So it becomes this hollow point here and a solid point here. Now, when these are rotated, two-fold rotation about Z2, so we have this one complete and after this we have four points. Now we have to apply this where there is two-fold rotation about Z2. So we can have when this point, point 1, point 2, point 3 and point 4. So point 1 goes for two-fold rotation about Z2, it becomes this hollow and when point 2 goes for rotation, it becomes this solid point. Point 3 rotates, it becomes solid point. And then point 4 rotates. Point 4 is the hollow one. Uh, sorry, point 4 is the solid one. So, this one. Okay. And now if you apply, then there is mirror about Z1. So you can see you already have points that are consistent with this mirror symmetry. And then this twofold rotation about Z3 is already satisfied. And this mirror is already satisfied. So rest is a redundant symmetry. So you have a total of 8 points. Okay, so let us continue with the stereographic projections of the tetragonal crystal system. So we have our fifth crystal system, the tetragonal one. Okay, so the point groups in this system are Point groups are 4, 4 bar, 4 by m, 4 to 2, 4 mm, 4 by 2 m, 4 by m, 2 by m, 2 by m. And the axis of rotations will be about Z3, Z1 and 1, 1, 0. Okay. So let us see the first of all, the 4. Okay. So this is the simplest one. That is a four-fold rotation about Z3. So four-fold rotation means a rotation of, of 90 degrees. So this is the a square is the symbol for four-fold rotation. And a four-fold rotation means rotation by 90 degrees. So suppose we start with the point here, up to 90 degrees it is here, then again 90 it is here, so point 1, point 2, point 3, then this is point 4 up to 90 degree rotation, then again it coincides with point 1. So this is your 4. Next is 4 bar, that is roto 
inversion. A fourfold rotation about Z3 and an inversion about origin. So, the symbol for a roto inversion axis is a square with a hollow circle at the center. Okay. So let us start with a point. A point here. So after a fourfold rotation, this is point one. It reaches here. Then an inversion about origin. It becomes a point like this. So we actually get the final point two and not this intermediate point. So I'll erase this. Then this after ninety degrees of rotation goes here and then after inversion it becomes a solid point here so this is not a point that we get okay so here it is only a solid point right now okay then this after 90 degree rotation comes at the position of point 2 and then after inversion about origin becomes a hollow point here this is point 4 and then this after rotation about 90 degree goes to the position of point 3 and after inversion about origin coincides with point 1 so this is 4 bar or 4 fold roto inversion now the third point group is O by M that is a fourfold rotation about Z3 and mirror about the plane perpendicular to Z3. So this is fourfold rotation about Z3 and mirror perpendicular to Z3. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Z1, Z2, Z3, a four fold rotation and a mirror perpendicular to Z3 so it will be this the plane of the paper will act as your mirror this is your mirror so suppose you start with a point here and after four fold rotation it goes on like this point 3 and then point 3 consecutive 90 degrees of rotations and then when it goes about reflection about uh, this plane of paper then these plane uh, these points that are above the plane of paper goes to become points below the plane of paper so they are represented by these hollow circles okay so this is your 4 by m Next is 4, 2, 2. So this has 4 fold rotation about Z3. Then first 2 fold rotation about Z1. And then second 2 fold rotation about 110 for this 110 what will be the angle suppose this is your axis system x y and z so x is 1 y is 1 so 
this becomes tan inverse y by x that is tan inverse 1 that is 45 degrees from x axis. So for this a stereographic projection will be like this is z1, this is z2, this is z3. So your 110 will lie at a 45 degrees angle. This is your 11024. Okay. So let us make first the fourfold about z3. It is this. Twofold about z1. Then another twofold about 110. So, let us apply this fourfold rotation to these twofold axes as well. So, this twofold about Z1 becomes after 90 degrees of rotation, the twofold axis about Z2. Okay, so this is also a twofold rotational axis. This 110 direction two fold axis after 90 degree of rotation comes here at an angle of 45 to both Z1 and Z2 and becomes two fold rotational axis. So now if we start to have points, so let us start with a point here and apply four fold rotation. So this goes. Here, point 1, point 2, point 3, and then point 4 each after consecutive rotations of 90 degrees. Then there is two fold about Z1. So, point 1 rotates like this and goes here. So, I will just remove the arrow and have this. Then, point 2 after rotation about Z1 comes here. Point 3 comes here and point 4 comes here. So these are the points. And then when you see, if you check carefully, you see that this 110 is actually redundant. Because this is making no change to the existing set of points. So if you see this point 2, this one, after twofold rotation, it will go here and which is already there. So, if we see, and for rest of the points, we see this is similar. So, like for this and this, for this point and this point, for this point and this point, for this point and this point about this axis. So, we see this last twofold rotation about 110 is actually redundant because it doesn't give us any set of new points. So next is fifth point group we have is 4 M M. Let us mark these as M1 and M2 for clarification. So Z1, Z2, Z3. So here your four fold about Z3, M1 perpendicular to Z1 and M2 perpendicular to 1, 1, 0. So this is the four fold. Then mirror perpendicular to Z1, so it is perpendicular to Z1 is this Z2, this is your M1. And then for M2, that is perpendicular to 110, so 110 is at 45 degrees from X, so this is 110. So for perpendicular to this, 
it becomes this line. This is perpendicular to 110, this is your M2. Okay, so if I apply fourfold rotation to M1 and M2, this becomes M1 again, and this original 110 is M2. So let us start with some point. Let us start with a point here. This is point 1. After 90 degrees, it goes to point 2. Then after 90 degrees, it goes to point 3. Then after 90 degrees, it goes to point 4. Then it is M1, that is mirror perpendicular to Z1, this one. So let us apply mirror operation. So first on point 1, so it becomes this point, 1 dash, then 2, this is 2 dash, then 3, this is 3 dash, then 4, this is 4 dash. Now if you see, this second mirror is again redundant. If you see, if you go on to reflect these points about M2, so these are already reflected. So like this point and this point, they are already reflection pairs about M2. This and this also are reflection pairs about M2. This and this are reflection pairs about M2. And this 2 dash and 1 are reflection pairs about M2. So, we can say that this last one is redundant. Now, let us move to sixth point group of tetragonal crystal system that is 4 bar 2 m. So, this is basically 4 fold roto inversion about Z3. Then two fold rotation about Z1 and then mirror perpendicular to 110 direction. Okay, let us draw. So let us for this is Z1, Z2 and Z3. So let us first have ro four fold roto inversion. With the hollow circle in between. Then two fold rotation about Z1. This is your two fold about Z1. Then mirror perpendicular to 110. So this is your 110. And a mirror perpendicular to this is this one. And after four fold rotation, this also becomes a mirror. So let us start with the points. Suppose this is the first point after four fold roto inversion so point number one this is so after four, 90 degree rotation it goes here and then after inversion it becomes this point so this is your second point actually now this second point after 90 degree rotation comes as a hollow circle at the po position of point one and after inversion becomes a solid point here. So this is your third point. This third point after 90 degree rotation comes at the location of point 2 as a solid point and after inversion becomes a hollow circle at this location, point 4. Now point 4 after 90 degree rotation goes as a hollow circle point as to the location of point 3 and after inversion coincides with point 1. 
so we are done with this four fold roto inversion now it's a turn of two fold rotation about z1 so let us rotate these points so for one it becomes one dash two becomes a solid point two dash three becomes a hollow point three dash and four becomes a solid point that is four dash now again this mirror is redundant here because even if we do not apply this or if even if we apply this there is no change in the set of points obtained even if we apply the last mirror operation there is no change in the set of points okay so let us move towards the last point group of tetragonal system seventh point group that is 4 by m 2 by m 2 by m so this is basically four fold rotation about z3 and mirror perpendicular to z3 this is the first then two fold rotation about z1 and mirror perpendicular to z1 then a two fold rotation about 110 and mirror perpendicular to 110 okay so let us draw these so this is your axis z1 z2 z3 now a four fold rotation and a mirror perpendicular to z3 that becomes a mirror in the plane of the paper so this is your mirror one okay then a two fold rotation about z1 and a mirror perpendicular to z1 that is a mirror along z2 this is your second mirror then a two fold rotation about 110 axis so this is your 110 axis basically 110 so a two fold rotation about this and a mirror perpendicular to this is like here this is your mirror 3 so now let us apply four fold to these symmetry operations so applying four fold to the two fold rotation about z1 this one so we get a two fold rotation about z2 as well now we apply two a four fold rotation to this two fold rotation about 110 so there is two fold rotation about this mirror as well now applying these four fold rotation to mirror 2 we get this also as a mirror and applying this two fold rotate four fold rotation to mirror 3 so this also acts as a mirror 
okay so let us start with our points suppose this is our starting point point 1 after four fold rotation it is point 2 point 3 and point 4 that is 90 degrees of rotation then mirror perpendicular to z3 they go to the plane below the plane of the paper so they become hollow circles now a two fold rotation about z 1 this is 2 this is 3 this is 4 so the two points at location 1 after two fold rotation the hollow changes to solid and the solid changes to hollow one similarly for point 2 the hollow changes to solid circle and the solid circle changes to hollow circle similarly for point 3 and point 4 now you see the rest of the mirrors and rotations are redundant so this is basically completely redundant because they add no more points if you see they are consistent with the other rotations as well as the other mirrors present here now let us move to the hexagonal crystal system sixth crystal system that is hexagonal so what are the point groups in hexagonal crystal system we have six six bar six by m six two two six m m six bar m two Six by m, two by m, two by m. So we have total seven point groups again. And what are the axes of rotations? They are first is z three or the c axis, then z one or the a axis, then it is along the direction two one zero. Okay. So let us start with the first and the simple one. That is six. This is a six-fold rotation. That is a rotation by sixty degrees. Okay. So let us start. So this is your circle. Make the axes z one, z two, z three for six-fold. it is denoted by a hexagon about z3 so let us make the axis for the six fold so this is your four suppose this is your four and rotated by 60 degrees you get this then rotated by 60 degrees you get this okay so if you have a point here then after 60 degree rotation it goes up to here then again 60 degree you get the third point then 60 degree you get the fourth then 60 get the fifth then 60 get the sixth and then 60 it coincides with the first point so this is 6 let us move to 6 bar that is six fold roto inversion about set 3 so this is your z1 z2 z3 so a roto inversion as in previous cases is denoted by a hollow circle in the center this is six fold okay 
okay so let us draw the six fold axis again so this is one then 60 degree rotation this another one sorry this like this then 60 degree rotation like this so let us start with the points so suppose we have a point here after 60 degree rotation it goes here and then an inversion operation makes it here so this is point 1 this is point 2 then after 60 degrees of rotation so we do not get this point so i'll erase this one so after 60 degrees of rotation of point 2 it goes here and then rot inversion about origin brings it here so this is your point 3 so we do not get this intermediate hollow point actually then this 3 rotates for 60 degrees okay it goes here and then inversion brings it here to the position of point 1 okay then this hollow point at point 1 rotates 60 degree goes here and then after inversion become a solid point at the location of point 2 so we do not get this hollow point then this hollow points rotates by 60 degree goes here sorry this solid point rotates by 60 degree goes here and then after inversion becomes this so this is 1 4 5 and 6 so this is how we get the points in 6 bar okay a total of 6 points let us move to the third point group that is 6 by m so 6 by m is six fold rotation about z3 and then mirror perpendicular to z3 that is in the plane of the paper So let us draw that. So, for a six-fold rotation about Z three, okay, and a mirror perpendicular to Z three. that is this one a mirror in the plane of the paper this is your mirror okay so for the axes so this is your one then after 60 degree it is here then after 60 degree it is here so like after 60 okay then it is repetitive in nature so let us start with the points so if this is a point then if we keep on rotating it by 60 we get these consecutive points until they coincide with the initial one so 1 2 3 4 5 6 then we have to mirror them in up uh, in about the plane of the paper so they remain here but they turn and uh, goes from the plane above the plane of paper to the plane below the plane of paper so they become hollow circles so this is what 6 by m looks like now let us move to the fourth point group 
of hexagonal crystal system that is 6 to 2. So here it is 6 fold rotation about Z3 then 2 fold rotation about Z1 and then 2 fold rotation about 2, 1, 0. So in the stereographic projections, this 2, 1, 0 lies at an angle of 30 degree from the Z1 axis. Okay. So this makes it easier for us. So let us draw now. Suppose this is your circle. I have drawn this one intentionally bigger. This is Z1, Z2, Z3. Then you have 6 fold about Z3. So it goes on here like this. Okay. Then you have two fold rotation about Z1, so it is here and here. And then you have two fold rotation about 2110, so it is at an angle of 30 degree from here, right? So it is like this. So this is 30. So this is here another two fold. So if you have the 6 fold applied to the 2 fold about Z1, it goes from Z1 to this 60 degree. So this is another 2 fold. Then again 60 degree. So this is here. And then again 60, it returns to its original position. Now, you apply the same to the one along 210 direction. So, this goes to 60 degree along. After 60 degree rotation, it goes along Z2. So, this is again your 2 fold. Then after 60 degree, it comes here. Okay, and then after 60 degree, it returns to its original position. So let us have points to denote this. So let us start with the point here. This is point 1. So after a rotation of 60 degree, let us go to 6 fold rotation first about Z3. It goes here, then here, here. Okay, this is 6 fold rotation about Z3. Now, 2 fold rotation about Z1. So, this point becomes this one. This is 1, this is 2, this is 3, this is 4, this is 5, this is 6. So, this becomes 1 dash. Then, this becomes 2 dash. This becomes 3 dash. This becomes 4 dash, this is 5 dash, and this becomes 6 dash. Now, 
pole rotation about 210 so we see there is no new point generated so like this 1 and 2 3 and 2 dash there are two fold rotations about 210 similar for other points so we can say this last two folded two fold rotation is actually redundant okay let us move to the fifth point group of hexagonal system that is 6m m let us say m1 and m2 for ease so this is six fold rotation about z3 then mirror 1 about sorry perpendicular to z1 that is about z2 then second mirror perpendicular to 2 10 direction okay now let us draw this is your circle let us draw the axes z1 z2 z3 then first a six fold rotation okay about z3 okay so let us have then a mirror about z2 a perpendicular to z1 so this is your mirror okay so six fold rotation goes like this and then like this okay so this is 60 6 this is 60 60 then 60 60 60 60 okay now we have to make mirror about uh this 2 1 direction so since this angle is 60 so this is 2 1 direction since this is 30 degree this is 60 degree so this is a mirror this is mirror 2 this is mirror sorry perpendicular to this one should be a mirror so here is the mirror so this is 60 so perpendicular to this will be here so this is mirror 2 so applying 60 degrees rotation six fold rotation to this we get this as a mirror 2 then this as mirror 2 wherein this is m1 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 and m1 okay M two, M two, M two, M two, M two. Let us start with a point. So suppose we have a point here. Okay. After sixty degrees of rotation, six fold rotation about Z three, we go about like this. so we get a total of six points then we go to mirror perpendicular to z1 that is about z2 this is point 1 2 3 4 5 5 and 6 so applying to point 1 we get another point this for point 2 for point 3 for 
4.5 and 4.6 now if we see this is redundant because this is not giving us any kind of new points in the projection Okay, if you see this, see this is like 1 dash, 2 dash, 3 dash, 4 dash, 5 dash and 6 dash. So 5 dash and 4 have mirror 1, uh, sorry this, 4 and 6 dash have mirror 2, then 3 and 1 dash have mirror 2 like that, okay. Now, next we go on to sixth point group for hexagonal crystal system that is 6 bar M and 2. Again, it is 6 fold roto inversion about Z3, then mirror perpendicular to Z1 sorry yeah perpendicular to Z1 that is about Z2 then third is two fold rotation about 2 1 0 okay okay let us draw now This is Z1, Z2, Z3. So a six fold roto inversion. So we can have the points for six fold roto inversion from the above case or the, or the second point group for hexagonal crystal. Okay. Then we have a mirror perpendicular to Z1 that is about Z2. So this is our mirror M1. So when this goes about six fold rotation, so it becomes a mirror here. Then a mirror here. Okay. Sorry, this is like 60 here. Then it goes to 60. So 30 and 30. This is 60. Then it goes to 60. And then it goes to 60. This. This. Side. Okay. So this is all M, 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 M. So. The two-fold rotation is also about this one, okay? Uh, so, for a two-fold, this, since this is at an angle of 30 degree from the x-axis, the two-fold rotation is also about this, since this is corresponds to 210 direction as well. So these are the two fold rotations. So let us start with the points. Uh, suppose we have this point now. Let us start with the point here. So it goes to point here. Then to here this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. Okay, then 
sorry this is plane rotation instead we have to do roto inversion so for this point 1 we get this point as 2 then we get this as 3 then we get this as 4 then we get this as 5 and then we get this as 6 ok so this is 6 fold roto inversion about z3 then we have to measure uh, perpendicular to z1 that is about z2 so these points become come here this goes here and this is as such ok now we have a two fold rotation so this is what we have a total of 12 points for 6 bar m2 ok ok now let us move to the last point group of hexagonal crystal that is 6 by m, 2 by m, 2 by m. Okay, so here this is 6 fold rotation about Z3 and mirror perpendicular to Z3. Next is 2 fold rotation about Z1 and mirror perpendicular to Z1 that is about Z2 and that is in the plane of paper. Okay, and then we have third one, two fold rotation about two one zero and mirror perpendicular to two one zero direction. Okay, so let us draw this one. This is Z1, Z2, Z3, a six fold about Z3. Then a mirror perpendicular to Z3 that is in the plane of the paper. So this is your mirror. So this is your mirror one. Now two fold rotation about Z1. So this is your two fold. And mirror perpendicular to Z1, so this becomes your mirror. This is M2. Now, two fold rotation about 210, so 210 is at 30 degrees to this, so this is your 210. So you have one two fold rotation here and mirror perpendicular to this. So this is 60. So this is your mirror. This is your mirror 3. Okay. So now let us. So this is. 
Okay, so now rotating this M2 about Z3 by six fold rotation. So this is again an M2. And this is also an M2. So this is also an M2. So M2 and this 2102 fold coincide. So we can draw two folds at the location of M2. So this is also a two fold. And this is also a two fold. Okay. Now rotating M3 by two uh, six fold rotation. So this is again my M3. This is again an M3. Okay, and so M3 coincides with the two fold rotation about Z1. So it all the locations of M3 has two fold by six fold symmetry since they are consistent. Okay, so this is the plot. So now if we want to plot the points, okay, so let us start with a point here, here, okay. So after six fold rotation, let us apply six fold rotation first. It moves here like this. Is like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Now it is to be measured perpendicular to Z3 that is in the plane of plate paper. So they become hollow circles as they go below the plane of the paper. Now it is the chance of two fold rotation about Z1. So all these points are rotated about Z1. So Hollow circles become solid and solid becomes hollow. So for 2, this is for this point. So for 1, we get here. For 4, 2 and 3 we have done. 4 becomes here, 5 comes here and 6 comes here. Now, if we want to mirror them about Z perpendicular to Z1, that is about Z2. Okay, so we get if uh, so we do not get any change in the points. Okay, we get similar points. If you see, if I even mirror here, so there is no change. Okay, no change. Now two fold rotation about two one zero also doesn't give us any new points and also the mirror. So this is clearly a redundant symmetry. Okay, so that leads us to the end of the stereographic projections of six crystal systems that is triclinic, monoclinic, rhombohedral, hexagonal, orthorhombic and tetragonal. We will come up with the stereographic projections of cubic crystal systems in another video. Thank you.